So let's talk about camber. Cam camber is the curve that you grind and then hone the end of the blade into. And we like camber because we can use it to change the shape of the edge of a board. And we can also use a slightly cambered iron to plane a really wide surface without ever having to worry about the corners of the iron leaving gutter marks in the surface. And with a bevel up plane, you have to do a little more work to get the same amount of camber as you would in a, uh, a standard York pitch plane. So if you think about how a York pitch works, you've got this iron bedded at about 45 degrees and the, uh, the low angle plane has the iron bedded at about 12 degrees. And if you think about that in terms of a curve, so if we're gonna put a curved edge on the, uh, on the iron, when you, when you look at that curve straight on, it's pretty dramatic. But as you rotate it down towards flat, the curve gets shallower and shallower and shallower. So where you've got a York pitch at 45 degrees, you've got a pretty serious curve, but as you lay it flat, that curve goes away. So if you wanna get the same amount of camber as you have in your smoother or your big joiner plane, and you're switching to a low angle, you're gonna to have to do a little more work to get those corners taken off. So I do that with my coarse stone. It's not quite as much as I would need. Uh, it's not quite enough to need to take it to the grinder. You could certainly do that, and I've got videos on how to grind a plain iron. So I've got this back in my custom ground jaws on my honing guide, and I'm going to use finger pressure to take more material off the edges first, and then I'll come back and kind of round it out. So, first swipe is always a pull cut, and you, you do that because you don't want the blade to bite into the stone when you push forward. So I'm going to reach across with this middle finger, and then I'm gonna put the other finger right over the top of it, and that's where all of my downward force on the blade is gonna be. My other, my thumb is back here on this guide bar, just trying to, you know, give it some stability. So if you have uh, OCD tendencies, this is, this is where it's really helpful because you need to count the strokes. So that was 20 strokes on this side. And I'm going to do 20 on the other side. So I've switched, I'm reaching across now with this thumb, with this finger, and supporting with this thumb behind it, and then pushing down with the other thumb. Oops. All right, let's take a look. So you can see with that wire edge that it's wider than it is in the middle. It's like a little V. And that means we've taken more material here because it's the, the, the part that we've honed is now wider on the ends than it is in the middle. So that's the first level of camber. I'm gonna go back and do the same thing again what I'm trying to do is now is take even more material off those corners. So we'll start on this side this time. Okay, same thing here. So now our, our ground surface is getting even wider at the ends. And you can see it's not really changing much in the middle. And that's what we're looking for. We don't want to take any more material off the center because that's cutting edge. But we do want to create this curve. So I'll go one more time. It looks like I'm getting a little bit uneven. I'm pushing a little bit harder on this side than I am on this side. And the center, the shallow part, is moving this direction, or when it's in my position, it's moving this direction. So I need to put a little more pressure or take a few extra sto strokes 
on this side to make sure that it stays even. Okay, <laughs> my honing guide is rubbing on the stone. You can see where it was leaving all that swarf. So I need to advance my blade just a little bit, get my corners back out away from the guide. Go again. Okay, so now it appears as if I might have overshot in the other direction. So I'm going to take a little more off this side. Nope, actually no, that was exactly, it's about the same, it's unchanged. I still need to take more off of this side. And I haven't really taken any cuts in the middle, so I'm going to go ahead and adjust my iron over. to get some symmetry here and I'm pretty happy with that shape right there. So what I'm going to do now is try to blend that into a smooth curve and I do that by pressing in different places and working my way across the blade. I tend to jump from side to side and then work my way into the middle. So why don't I go ahead and well clean this stone off. I'm going to start on the far side, take about five strokes. Then I'm going to go to the other corner, take about five strokes. Then I'm going to step in halfway between the center of the blade and the corner and do five strokes. And then switch to the other side, same place, halfway between this side and the center. And then I'll go right to the middle. And now we have a burr all the way across, and we know that we should because we've been doing quite a bit of grinding here. And now we've got a pretty nice gentle sweep all the way across, and we're ready to move on to the next grit. So we'll jump up to the 5000. Now this, since we've established the curve, we don't need to do uh, all this extra work again. We just are going to treat it like it's a freshly honed edge and we're just trying to polish it. So we're just going to work our way across the edge an even number of strokes all the way across in those five different positions. So left, right, halfway, and I'm doing 10 strokes. And the center. And now we're starting to polish off the scratch marks from the thousand grit stone. And if you look really carefully, you can see the facets that I've created by honing in those five different positions. And it might seem obvious now in this first honing, but as you use it, when you take it to the, to the material and you start planing, uh, it's not going to be that obvious. It's just going to be a nice flat surface. So here we are with our 8,000 grit stone. Let me turn it around. Okay, now we're polishing. Same thing. 10, 15 strokes in each position.
Okay. So we've got a nicely polished edge all the way across. There are still some really fine scratch marks at the very corners from the lower grit stones, but the whole idea is that the corners don't cut anyways, so I don't have to worry too much about that. So if you do have a few little scratches, uh, don't worry about those being weak spots in your edge. Uh, you can just, just go to work, don't worry about it. So now we come to the more um, controversial part of the sharpening process that I use. I am a user of the ruler trick. So this is a little $2 ruler that uh, Lee Nielsen Toolworks sells. Uh, be sure to order a couple of these when you, uh, when you order your planes. One of them is really good for putting a micro bevel on the back side of this iron. And what this allows me to do is completely skip the step of polishing the back of this plane iron. Uh, the, the mill marks on the back of this, they end up being scratches in the edge if you don't polish them out. Well, the idea behind the ruler trick is that you're only polishing the very finest bit of the edge and you're leaving the rest of it for when you finally get there and you'll polish it out then. So on this first pass, there's actually a little bit more work than normal to do because you're having to remove the, the mill marks for the first time but every time you sharpen this blade, your edge is moving backwards and out of habit, I still walk up, I place the iron flat, I polish the back for just a few strokes, and then I go from you know coarse, medium, and fine and do my sharpening. And uh, what that does is it, it makes those mill marks just a little bit shallower each time, and then I go ahead and I do the ruler trick to polish out what's left. So what we'll do is set the blade on the stone with the end hanging off. And I'll show you what I would normally do. It's probably about five or 10 strokes. And I'm just varying the pressure on the blade with my hand as I rub it on the stone. So I've taken the burr off with that and you can just catch the glint of the polish there on the edge. It's pretty hard to see because it's really small. There are a few of the a few deeper scratch marks in here that are still all the way out extending to the edge of the blade. So I just have to do a little bit more work. And like I said, next time I will have already polished to the bottom of those deeper grooves and all I have to do is just move that edge back. It won't be as much work. Still got a few there. See how big that is. I'm gonna flip the stone around so I don't cut a groove in there. And we'll go one more time. And it looks like there's maybe one or two more scratches that are going all the way to the edge. So I'm gonna uh, gonna do a couple more passes here. And it's important to get those scratches out because they, they weaken that edge. And as soon as you start to get a, as soon as you get a, a, a divot or a groove in an edge, it starts to crumple, the metal starts to crumple into that and the blade gets dull really fast. So this is why you polish the back of a blade, but it's only the very end of it that has to be polished. Okay, so I'm happy with that. That one groove that's left is stops just short of the edge. And I know that because this is a brand new iron, uh, the edge is brittle uh, and it's gonna take use and grinding and sharpening for you know a little while. I'm gonna have to probably sharpen it 10 or 15 times before I get past that, that brittle bit on the edge of, this, of the blade that comes from the heat treating process. And in the course of doing that, I will remove any of those scratches as I work that polished edge back. Uh, so I, I'm okay with having an edge that's not absolutely perfect to begin with because I know I'm gonna have to go back and sharpen sooner than later anyways. So the next step here is to clean the blade up, oil it down, and get it in the body of the plane, and then we'll set it up for use. Okay, I've got my bird's eye view camera angle set up here. Uh, you've got the blade with the uh, 
a little heavier than normal camber on it, heavier than a, than a bevel down plane. I'm going to push the blade up into my finger. I've got the mouth wide open down here and try to put it in there without touching the body of the plane to the front of that iron. Okay, now we're in there. Put our lever cap on and I'm just lightly touching it. Okay, so just got enough pressure on it to keep it from moving and maybe an eighth of a turn more. Doesn't take much. You can always tighten it up a little bit more later. And this screw is floating free. And since I didn't move it when I did my test setup, it should be pretty close to where it needs to be for right now. So let's tilt this blade up and you can see I'm using the maple, the light color of the maple to reflect on the surface so I can see when that blade comes out. Let me get the focus done here. Here we are. Okay, so we're looking down the body, the sole, and we're advancing the blade, basically driving the screw towards ourselves, and we're looking for it to come up through the mouth. I think we're getting pretty close. Okay, there we go. And just, just starting to come through. And we can see that it's a little heavier in the center than it is on the sides, but it's not quite square. So let's go a little further up so we can see it more clearly. All right. So what I'm going to do is adjust it by eye first. And I think I need to move this side back into the body and advance this side. So I need to pivot the blade this way. You heard it click. Okay, now it looks to be a little more even. So what I'm gonna do is back it off until it disappears. Right about there. And then I'm going to adjust the mouth. It's a little bit tighter. Now you can get an idea for that camber Another way to see, just sort of judge by eye, oh, that stinks. I just bumped it. That's what I get for doing it, looking through a camera. So I may have to resharpen this blade when this video is over. All right, another way you can see if the camber is centered is you should have the tightest point of the mouth right in the middle, and then the openings should be about the same. And it still looks like, it looks like this side is sticking out a little too much. Now they look like they're a little more even. So let's test it with our scrap. What we're looking for here is a cut down the middle, and I'm getting it. So there's a little bit of a little bit of shaving right there in the center, and no cut on the sides, so no resistance. You hear it? Okay, so that blade is fairly well centered. Let's test it on a bigger piece of wood. All right, we've got the blade centered in the body. We're gonna take our first cuts. And we'll see if I damage the edge by bumping the back of the mouth into it. Okay, so we got a really, really light cut on that first pass. I'm gonna go ahead and, okay, so I forgot to take the backlash out. This blade or this knob was still floating around. And what happens when you do that is that little rim in there is floating between the front and the back of the notch in the back of the blade. <clears throat> and that allows the blade to be pushed back when it encounters wood. So it won't cut. It'll just push the blade out of the way until it hits the back of the groove. And when we have a really light set like this, it just pushes it out of the way and it barely cuts. So I'm going to advance it until, you know, so now it's not moving until the backlash is gone. And then I'm going to give it a quarter turn, maybe an eighth of a turn, somewhere in between. Okay, so now we're starting to get cuts. All right. Now it started, it stopped cutting because 
the camber of the blade is only allowing it to project past the body for a certain width. And if that width is smaller than the width of the board, you have to either move the plane over. If you don't move the plane over, it's gonna ride on these two high edges all the way down. So if I wanna get more cuts without adjusting the plane, I would just move it to where the center of the plane is on the edge of the board, and it'll take a cut then. And it's, uh, it's taking a good cut. It's leaving a nice polished surface. <clears throat> now I took, uh, I put a pretty strong camber in this and uh, I think maybe it's a little too much. And that's easy to fix the next time I sharpen the blade. And all I have to do is spend a little more time on that core stone right in the center of the iron and that'll flatten that curve just a little bit. And then I go and polish like I normally would and I'll end up with the, the right amount of camber for me. Um, and if, if the opposite had happened, if the blade had turned out to be a little too flat, uh, then I would have just needed the next time I sharpen to spend a little more time on the corners and then uh, and then to slowly work it back to the way I want it. And it's, it's a never ending process. You're gonna be moving that curve around a little bit here and a little bit there. Don't worry about it. It's okay to have slight changes in the blade over time. Uh, the one thing that I have learned about myself and when I tend to sharpen, I tend to lean a little bit more on one side than I do on the other. And my blades, if I don't check them now and again, they slowly start to move out of square. So uh, now I have a habit of, uh, you know, if I'm using a blade um, multiple times, sharpening it multiple times during the day, every once in a while I'll put a square on it before I sharpen it, make sure that I don't need to adjust the angle and my pressure when I'm honing. And then if it's something that I haven't used in a while, when I go to sharpen it, I always check it first because you never know. So that is the setup and sharpening process for every low angle bench plane. So that would apply to a smoother, a jack like this, a jointer, uh, anything in between. Uh, remember, only use a ruler trick on planes. Don't use it on chisels. And enjoy your time at the bench.